Hi everybody, my name is Rachel Reynolds and I work for Healthy Communities of the Capital Area for their main snap -ed program. And today I wanted to make a uh, beef and barley soup. Uh, it's starting to get pretty cold outside and I think there's nothing better uh, in the world to have when it's chili like that than a good soup. So today we're doing beef and barley and this recipe comes um, from Maine Snap Ed. Um, so if you want to uh, look it up, you can Google Maine Snap Ed and find it in the recipe finder. Okay, but for this recipe, you'll need a pound of ground beef. Um, I didn't happen to have any ground beef, but I did have um, some steak. Uh, so what I did was I just trimmed all of the visible fat off of it and I cut it up uh, into really uh, small pieces uh, before I put it in the pan uh, to cook and brown it. A little uh, tip or trick for cutting meat like that is if you need to cut things like steak, chicken, or pork and you want to get a really thin or small cut on them, um, I would recommend uh, cutting them while they're still partially frozen. You don't want them hard as a rock frozen. Um, you don't want them thawed all the way either. Uh, having them just thawed part way uh, makes it a lot easier uh, to cut up into small pieces. So the other thing we're gonna need is a large carrot, a small onion, two stalks of celery, uh, a couple of cloves of garlic, uh, if you don't have fresh garlic, you can use uh, dried garlic uh, in place of that. And then um, eight cups of stock or eight cups of water with a couple of the uh, beef bullions. Um, I use a combination of stock and water for mine uh, and because I like the low sodium stock. I don't want to add a lot of salt to uh, what I'm making. Uh, and then I have a can of diced tomatoes with the juice um, and a cup of uh, uncooked barley. Um, I happen to have the 10 minute uh, quick barley. So for the purpose of uh, what I'm making today, I'm gonna actually add it a little bit later than what the recipe calls for, just so that it doesn't get overcooked or mushy. Um, and then a cup of sliced mushrooms and a half a teaspoon of uh, black pepper. Okay, so I've started off, I've already washed my hands, I've washed all of my countertop surfaces and I've washed my vegetables off uh, so that everything is nice and clean. And I've also even washed off um, my can because you don't know what's gotten on the surface of the can while it's been uh, you know, in transport or at the store or even in your cupboard. So it's a great idea to clean that can before you pop that opener into it uh, so that you can avoid contaminating uh, your food. Okay, so I am gonna, um, I've already kind of uh, minced up the garlic uh, just to save a little bit of time. Okay, but I'm gonna start off with my small onion. I like to leave this end on it when I start to cut it and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so I've taken off the top part and I'm gonna take off the peel. See that the, the root end is still on there. Leaving the root end just helps me to get a nice fine dice when I do uh, start to cut it up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make little slits all down the side this way, and then I'm gonna cut it uh, into small dices. Okay, and when 
I did that, I just cut up to the root end, but not through it. all I have left. Probably should have saved that for last since it's making me cry a little bit. <clears throat> okay, and then next I'm going to do the carrot. Okay, and you'll notice that I've washed my carrot really well, but I haven't peeled it. Um, you don't really need to peel your carrots before you cook them. A lot of people do, but there's nothing wrong with the peel as long as you get it really clean. When you do peel it, you're just really just throwing away, um, you know, good nutritious food. Okay, so I'm going to slice my carrot in half so that I have a nice stable surface to work with when I'm dicing it up. into um, a clean bowl just so I have more room on my cutting board for cutting up my celery. Alright, there we go. So with the celery, it's a lot like the carrot. I'm going to just trim the ends off and then slice it Okay, and then I'm just going to dice it up. going to go into the same bowl. Okay, so then I just have my mushrooms to slice. And I have washed these and taken a paper towel just to wipe off any um, of the remaining uh, little tips of soil. Okay, and I've trimmed the ends off as well. Okay. 
Okay. Those I'm going to put in a separate bowl just because they're added a little later so that they don't get too mushy. Okay, so my beef has been browning in the pan. Uh, because I trimmed all the fat off, I don't need to drain it. If you use like a ground beef in this recipe um, and you find that it's not um, like a, a, a low fat one, uh, you may have to drain it a little bit before you add in the vegetables. Okay, but I'm gonna add in the carrots, onion, and celery um, and the garlic and get that cooking along with the beef. Okay, so that's gonna just cook for about five minutes or so until the vegetables start to soften up. Um, and then I'm gonna be able to add in um, my stock, my tomatoes, um, my black pepper. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna hold off on the, the barley um, and I can also add my mustards as well at that point. I'm gonna hold off on the barley just for a little bit uh, because I don't want it to get uh, mushy and kind of disintegrate in the in the soup. Okay, so I'm going to let that cook and I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so after I added the tomatoes and the water and the stock and the black pepper, um, I brought the, uh, the soup up to a boil and then I turn the heat down and I put a cover on it. Okay, and that's gonna cook for about 30 minutes. Okay, about 20 minutes uh, into that, I'm gonna add my cup of the quick barley uh, to finish it off. And then right at the end, I actually like to add in um, a little bit of like frozen corn and peas as well, just to give it some more uh, color and a little bit more flavor um, as well. So. Uh, not only is this recipe um, really delicious and super filling and can feed a, you know, a big family on uh, just a one pot meal, um, it's also pretty affordable. And uh, in terms of thinking about like the My Plate, um, we cover a lot of ground with this. So you get a lot of vegetables uh, in there. You get some whole grains with the barley and then you get uh, a, a lot of protein between the beef and also the stock. Uh, so it's a, it's a great way to cover a lot of bases and get uh, a good filling and tasty meal. Um, so one other thing I was uh, wanting to talk about was stock. So um, several of our recipes call uh, for some type of stock and we don't always have that and it can be a little bit pricey. Um, as well. So I wanted just to mention that when I make uh, meals, a lot of times you'll have pieces, you know, of the celery, the onion, carrot, potato, whatever it might be. You can actually save all that and um, cook it um, in some water on the stovetop to make your own uh, vegetable stock. So I like to do that. Um, Every, every now and then, whenever I have a fair amount of the, the pieces of vegetables. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take that stock and I just pour it into uh, like ice cube trays and freeze it. And then I'll pop them out and put four or five uh, into a small baggie. That way, if I'm cooking something and I wanna add a little bit of flavor to it, I can just throw as few or as many as I want to into the recipe to add some flavor and also add some nutrition. Um, and then once they're done cooking, of course, I will uh, put them in the compost uh, to dispose of that, but what's left of it. All right, so I hope you enjoy this recipe. Um, and if you're looking for more uh, great recipes and other information, uh, visit us at mainsnapbed.org um, and you'll find all kinds of uh, interesting recipes and nutrition information there. Um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.